I am not the best builder in The Sims 4, however my building ability has improved so much recently and I'm going to show you how I've improved my building ability and how I'm still improving it now. So to start off with, I'm just going to show you guys how I like to make the basic vanilla American style suburban house. Now of course the queen of doing these kinds of builds is Little Simsy and what she always says in all of her videos is first build a box and that's what we're going to do, we're going to be building a box. And then once I've built a box, what I really love to do is basically just build a few things coming out of the box. Now maybe this box is a little bit too small, I will just make it a little bit bigger. Preferably a rectangular box I think is fine. And then what I normally like to do first, okay, I like to make basically a squarish shape coming off the side. Now it doesn't have to be right on the edge, it can be a little bit on the edge. It doesn't have to be a square, you can make it like a rectangle, that's not a rectangle, whatever this shape is, a pentagon, whatever, octagon, I'm not good at maths. However, I usually like to just keep it as simple as possible, so I normally like to just do a basic square. And then once you've done that, again, I like to just put a few more things coming out the other side. Here as well, I think I might just put a little thing coming out the edge here. Over here as well, I'll put something else. I'll make this one a little bit bigger maybe. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. In fact, do not make it symmetrical. One thing that I've learned about building in The Sims 4 is do not make everything symmetrical because if you make everything symmetrical, it looks plain, it looks dull. And that is something I've had to learn the hard way because I am a very organized and clean person and I love symmetry in my life. <laughs> so that was a very, very difficult life mistake I've made when building in The Sims 4. But it's helped me to improve so much. Anyway, here we have our basic box with our weird things coming out. Some people like to do an upstairs, other people don't. There's two ways to go about this. The first way is to basically build a big box on top of the other box. However, what I normally like to do is I normally like to just put like half a side on there. And in fact, already I'm feeling like this is too big. So I'm actually gonna make this entire house a little bit smaller underneath. And that's perfectly fine. If you don't like it how it is currently, you can always just drag and drop these little arrows in and it can help to make it smaller. Maybe I'll cinch it in a bit at the front too. If only cinching in my waist would be this easy. I'd be very skinny very easily. I gained a lot of pounds over winter, that's all I'm saying. And now it's time for a basic roof pattern. Now again, a lot of people hate roofs. It's so easy. If you're doing one of these styled houses, just start off with a gabled roof that you can see here. And all I like to do is just drag it across. Now if you, as you drag it across, you can see it goes up. So if you don't like it up like that, you can drag it down any height you like. What I like to normally do now is do a another gayboard roof. So what I like to do is just have a small one like this coming down here just to make it a little bit more dynamic. And don't be afraid as well to do another one on the roof itself. I normally like to put these ones like bang in the middle. Usually whenever I do these ones I drag it like all the way across and even though it doesn't really serve any purpose I think it just makes it look a little bit more dynamic and it gives it more layers. One thing that really improves builds I think is just having as many layers as possible. So now we've done that. Now we've got these awkward little bits coming off here. Now again you have two options. You could do another gable style roof like this coming off, which I think looks quite nice there. However, in other areas like this one, it can look kind of strange. You know, that doesn't really look very normal there. Even if we turn it around like this, I guess, oh, it's okay. But of course, one thing that happens when you do these kind of roofings is basically it clips through here. All we have to do is not click the big arrow, but can you see like the little arrow? What this basically does is it doesn't make the roof bigger or smaller, but it actually, so as you can see, it just makes the tiles bigger and smaller. If I click on the main arrow, it actually brings the wall out. It extends the wall itself out. However, when we just move these, it doesn't extend the wall. It just extends like the frame. And you can also do this to reduce the frame. So as you can see, it's clipping through here. All we do is click it to make it smaller. Now, as you can see, every time you drag it, it drags both sides. To prevent that from happening, just hold down the shift key and it, you can, as you can see, it only moves one side. So I'll just drag that in and now it's not clipping as much. And now for this little thing here, one thing I love to do is the half gabled roofs. Now these ones are really, really great. If you just drag them all of the way down, you can drag them across here and it just helps to fill out the awkward little space. And in fact, I'm going to do another little gayboard roof here as well because I think it would work perfectly fine. And these half gabled roofs are also really, really great if you're doing a Porsche or a porch, however you like to call it. I call it a Porsche, but I know that's also a car, so um, I don't really know. Anyway, whenever I am doing a Porsche, there's two options. You can either just do like a front Porsche or a wrapped around Porsche. I normally like to do it like half wrapped around. So I normally just do it like this and then around the back of the property as well. I kind of do like a half wrapped around Porsche, forge, porch, whatever. And of course we can just extend that up, not too high, not too low. Now I know a lot of people whenever they do porch, Porsches, they like to do a roof hanging over the edge of it. So all you need to do is get the half gabled roof again, place it, basically you can't place it directly on top of it because it will just sit on top of the foundation. What you've got to do is place it on a nearby roof, but then just kind of drag it away from the roof. It's kind of annoying, but it's the only way to 
to go about it. And then of course, flatten it straight down and then just drag it across to your liking. Now another option if you don't like the half gable roof, because as you can see with mine, it's kind of clipping a bit over where this roof is here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fix that by dragging this over. Does that fix it? Yeah, it does a little bit. It kind of hides it. If you don't like these half gable roof options, another great option is to use the hip to roof, which is this basically standard square one. Again, you've got to place it directly on top of the wall and then just kind of move it out of the way of the wall and drag it into a different position. Flatten that right down. I personally find these ones the most difficult and tricky to use. As you can see, you know, it, it's, it's a little bit annoying. It's clipping through a bit. I don't like these ones, but in some builds it does work, especially if you're wrapping it around like the whole house like this. It can be really quick and easy way to do it. However, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to go be going back to my half gable roof and I'm just going to pretend that this little clipping thing here doesn't exist. And you do have to make compromises when you are building in The Sims 4. It's just how it works. Again, I'm just going to be building another one around the back here too. And do you know what guys? I'm not happy with this house. I hate this little roof slanting down here. I'm really not that happy with it. I kind of want to change it. Shall I change it? Unless I just bring this out again and then build another little roof on top of here. Oh, there we go. We've gone with that. I've just decided to move it over here a little bit more. And there we go. It just gives it a little bit more equality and structure. And that's okay to change things as you go along. There's no problem with that. Again, you might even just want to extend that out. And again, you could even just put a small gabled roof on this one as well, like we did on the main, the main part of the property. And again, it just helps to give it a little bit more structure. The more structure you have, the better. And I find roofs really, really make or break a build. If you have a really complicated, nice roof style, it can really help to bring it together. And again, don't worry if you're not the best at doing roofs. As long as you have something, it looks better than nothing, you know? Now we have this one thing that really helps to bring a roof together is a chimney. Now it doesn't matter what chimney, don't overthink it. Just put any old chimney, even if it's just this little ugly cylindrical thing here, perfectly fine. Again, from the back of the house, just put a little chimney if you can't see the front one. Honestly, it just helps to bring the build together a little bit more. And now we've done that, of course, we've got to do coloring and things for the house. Now, if you're doing one of these American suburban houses, one of the best things to use is the siding, sliding, whatever it's called, these things. So what a lot of people like to do with these kinds of houses is they use these sliding, whatever these sidebar things on. They use them on the main structure of the house, but then on the side bits coming off, they normally do brickwork or brick patterns. So for the sake of this build, I'm just going to be doing a typical blue Little Simsy style suburban house. And as you can see, we've got our blue structure all around there. And then for the outside bits, I'm just going to do some masonry or even some rock and stone. Obviously try to choose colors that kind of work well together. In fact, I'm going to change this blue sliding because I don't want blue. Shall I do red? Shall I be bold and do a red one? No. Maybe just a little bit darker, more greeny colour. And if you're really struggling, by the way, one thing that really helps is basically looking at colour schemes. So as you can see, I've done, you can't see it because the lighting in The Sims 4 is absolutely terrible. Can I change the weather and see it? It's kind of like a dull greeny colour. One really great tip if you're looking for design is to basically go on the internet. Let me show you. So as you can see here, I've basically just Googled complementary colours generator. Click on this first one here, which is the one that I always use. And basically you can choose a colour and you can basically find complementary ones. So my house was kind of like a darkish green. So if we click on this dark green, they have different options. Here we've got complementary. So you can see a complementary colour here is um whatever this colour is, like mauve or whatever. You can see monochromatic colours. You can see similar colours. They have all of these different styles of complementary colours that you can use. I honestly recommend using a website like this because it does really help you just to make your builds a little bit better. So obviously we're going to have to go for like a mauvey purple style colour for this one. Oh and by the way, if you look in the filters down at the bottom right, you can see we have colour filters. So I'm just going to click on purple and it makes my life a lot easier. Do we have any purple bricks? Absolutely not. This is going to be very difficult. <laughs> Unless I just trash the purple and green scheme. In fact, I will. I'm going to look at my complementary colour generator thing again. Back to the drawing board, which is perfectly fine. Unless we go for like a, a darkish blue again. And what's complementary to blue? Okay, so a basic like beigey brown. That's going to be really simple to do. So I'm just going to do a blue style Little Simsy Suburban build. I'm sorry, that meme is dead now. I should stop saying that really. Anyway, now we've got that, it's very easy just to find a beige or a brown to work with it. Again, actually this one is perfectly fine, I think. Maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll put it on these two things. In fact, this one here coming off as well. However, this little side house here as well, I think it looks really nice, but I don't just want to do it in the exact same color because it looks kind of dull. I really want to just do three different styles. So I think I'm going to do these two and these two, but then I want to do another one as well. I quite like this one here because it follows a very similar style to the main house itself, which I think works really well. So I'm just going to leave that one on there. Now time for the roof color. Now again, I don't really overthink this, but normally I just do like the, this black one here because I think it looks really nice. I think it looks 
nice in most situations. However, if you want to do a lighter one, that's perfectly fine. This is also another really common one that I like to use. I think it can look really nice. And you know, on these like little gay board bits here as well, and sometimes I like to normally do like a slab roof. If it's, especially if it's a little small one, like this one here, you know, you might even want to just do like a sheet because sometimes people do have houses with like sheets and things instead. So it personally depends on your preference. And then of course we just need some miscellaneous details. So if I just do some stairs going up here, I think I'm going to do like some gray and white ones maybe. Any old wooden banister is going to do. The most challenging for me is always finding the matching railings. I think these are the matching ones, are they? No, they're not. Are these what? Okay, these are the matching ones. I always find it difficult finding the matching ones. <laughs> anyway, now that's done, of course we need some columns. Base game columns are fine, but I love these ones from the get together pack. They're really streamlined, so I always use these, but you can use any columns. Of course, put these on the, the main bits where the roof is actually hanging off. But again, as well, if, it, if you want to put it on the sides like this, it really helps to bring your build together. I normally do it on these like little bits that are coming off of the property. Again, if you don't like the colors, just make it a little bit darker or something, that's fine. But I just find again, it's an additional layer because the more layers you have, the better it looks. And you can drag these really high as well. So I've just dragged this one up here. Now those are done. I just feel like it helps make the property look a little bit more complete. Of course, now we've just got to put some planks down here, I'll put anything you like. These look nice, very good. Of course, if you want to change the angle of them, by the way, all you have to do is use the arrow keys and you, oh my God, my camera's going crazy. Let me do it outside to show you. So if you just put the arrow keys down, you can see it changes the angle of them. And then again, I normally just, just like to do a little path leading up to it. I normally use the terrain tool paths just because they're free and they're a lot more seamless. You can do any of these ones, maybe this one here, just drag it along like this. Get a tree or something you like, chuck it in the corner, chuck a couple of thin small trees on the edge if you're into that kind of stuff. There we go, lovely. Now all I like to normally do is just put some bushes and some grass around the garden as well. So even if you just do like these little grass things here, I know they're not that beautiful, but just doing a little bit of grass or at least something really, really helps. And by the way, if you're wondering why it's I'm able to move it so smoothly, it's because I'm holding down the Alt key. You must have move objects on. If you click Control Shift C, all you have to do is like BB dot move objects, click enter. The cheat is either turned on or off. Mine is on right now. So you can basically freely place anything as long as you hold the Alt key. And if you hold the Alt key, you can also uh, free rotate things as well. You can place things overlapping each other. And that's basically very, very essential if you're doing gardening because you want things to overlap each other. You want to be able to place plants on top of each other because that's how real plants in the real world work. It's nothing special. I'm just going to chuck a few bushes here and there. Got a bit of grass around the edge if you like. Or does that look a bit messy? Let's get rid of the grass. It looks messy. Sometimes I like to use stones. Now these stones can be a little bit too big. All you've got to do is press the square bracket keys to turn them up and down. The left one makes it smaller and the right one makes it bigger. So I normally like to just make these a little bit smaller and put them around here. Again, just to give the build a little bit more character and layers, which is what we're looking for. I also like to put really small ones around trees as well, just to help to make them pop out and stand out a little bit more too. It's just a smaller notable, uh, it's just a small unnoticeable feature, but I do find that it does help. And as well, whenever I do trees or bushes, I really like to just use the terrain tool to put a bit of dirt underneath them. And now one more thing to make the basic shell of your house stand out more is pulling dirt around the edge. EA are a classic one for doing this. I wouldn't go for a whole dark, really, really dark dirt around here like this because it looks kind of dirty. I would just go for a lighter one, maybe like one of these. Yeah, we go, like a nice yellow. Make the brush a bit softer and just go around the edge carefully like this. It's so so subtle, but whenever you look at the build, it does make it stand out and pop out a little bit more. It does take a little bit of time, but I promise it is worth it in the end. And there we go. Now, of course, now we've got to do the doors and windows, the dreaded doors and windows. These are the most difficult things, I think. Basically, don't worry too much. You can do anything. I might just go for this color here. Don't worry too much. Obviously, this is a suburban one. I'm going to use my favorite parenthood suburban, <laughs> suburban windows here. These are the best. Or is that a little bit too big? I personally find window placement in The Sims one of the most difficult things about building. I've had this problem with every Sims game ever since The Sims 1. I've hated doing windows and doors. There's just something about them that's so stressful and they never ever feel right. Maybe here I'll just do two of these big long ones. You don't have to follow the exact same pattern all around the house. But because this this main big blue building here is kind of like one unit, I would like to do the same style all around at least this blue thing. So maybe if I just put some of these blue ones around here. And then for the upstairs, maybe we can 
could just, there's a lot of roofing around here. So I guess we just have to go for something a little bit thinner. Maybe this one, that's quite thin. The thing about windows is I always end up changing them every time I go through the build. One, I think big mistake that I used to make that a lot of people make is trying to make windows symmetrical. Don't make them symmetrical. It doesn't matter. Even after you've placed them, you can change them and move them again. It's perfectly fine. Windows in real life houses are absolutely strange. If you look at any real life house, the windows are always really weirdly placed. So don't worry about getting this one perfect. There we go. That's fine for now. There are a lot of windows. I might move some of them in the future, but this is how it's going to look so far. I'm kind of happy with this. Oh my God, guys, I just stopped recording and I realized I have my thingy on pause and everything I just recorded, you didn't even get to see it. Like you can just see this big black Okay, I'm this way. This big black box around me <laughs> because I put my game on pause and my camera on pause. All of the footage I just did, I lost. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to go back and show you guys. I'm so sorry. I can't believe I did that one, absolute idiot. I totally forgot what you have and haven't already seen, but basically this is the finished house. Anyway, everything I did really after I paused the game wasn't really that significant. I just put some planter boxes around the house. I put these things here, which are called corbels or corbellions or Corbellas, whatever you want to call them. Something I've learned today. My main tips for building a house in The Sims 4 are firstly, layers. As you can see, we have different layers. We have different sizes of roofs, different directions, different styles of roofs. These all count towards different layers. Oh, my phone's going off, I'm sorry. Next up, we have these little planter boxes, which again, is just another way of adding layers. These corbels add another layer. Putting chimneys, are layers, trees, rocks around the trees, a little bit of dirt outlining the house, some plants. These all just add layers to make it look a little bit more complicated. Next one up is color. As I said, go on one of those complimentary color websites. Do everything in different styles and patterns and colors and it can help to make it pop a little bit more. And the last thing is simply persistence. Have fun. Build one new house every week. Every single time you build a house, one thing that really helped, I'm sorry, my phone's going off. One thing that really, really helped me to grow as a builder in The Sims 4 is that every time I did a new house, I tried at least one new thing, one new technique, even though I was wasn't very good at that technique. At least trying it really, really helped me to improve. I'm oh, I'm gonna put my phone on silent, shut up. Now just to confirm guys, I haven't actually done anything on the inside of this property. And the reason why is building is very, very difficult to buying. Interior design and exterior design are very, very different things. So I don't wanna merge the lines too much. So I'm just gonna leave this video here. If you do wanna see an interior design tutorial, let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of this build? Let me know down below. Any other questions, let me know. Other than that, thank you so much. See you next time.